So uh, I thought we could start with the basics, if you could tell me a bit about uh, Obelisk. Uh, who and what is Obelisk? Um, yeah, sure, let me start and then I uh, switch over to the guys. Um, hi, I'm Basti. I'm the bass player for Obelisk. Um, I'm not one of the original members. I joined like, I think, five, six years ago. Something like that, so in the good old times where we can still play concerts and stuff. Um, yeah, Obelisk, I don't know, how should we describe our band? It's a mixture between noise and noise with a little bit of noise and... Uh... Yeah, we started out as a, um, I don't know, with that classical punk spirit, we were just some, some friends uh, who met and um, our former bass player he was a no our former guitarist he was a bass player before and i was a guitarist and uh, we didn't find a drummer so i started playing bass and as we didn't find a drummer i took over the the drums but i never learned that or didn't know how to do it or something and so it started out as a fun project in 2008 and we made some doom and we made some sludge and now we are a trio um, and it's getting more noisy and noisy yes <laughs> uh, it was uh, first album is uh, i would say classical stoner rock album with uh, some psychedelic parts and we made a progress yes i, so. I yeah i would say this yes um towards more the noise uh, noisy stuff and um yes but also a good mixture of uh, all kind of uh, also stoner pulse uh, yeah yeah and we uh, made our uh, fifth album yeah, we made it. We made it. Uh, yes, it's it's recorded, but um, we lo uh, looking for a cover or making cover, uh, and um, I uh, hope or we hope it's uh, the coming out is in maybe January uh, twenty three. Yes, maybe. Yeah, I guess uh, on your social media, the cryptic messages to GOG 2023 allude to the upcoming album then. So, yeah. So, uh, in, wi in which stage is the album and, you know, how, when have these songs been written and how? That's a, that's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of a weird... Yeah, it was originally, it was Tugok 2020. Um, Tugok stands for the ultimate grace of God. And the, the journey we had was actually super weird and super funny. Um, we uh, played a show in Antwerp, in Belgium. And uh, we went the next day to, to explore the city with quite a bit of a hangover. And um, we came across a, a barber shop in a, in a really rundown area of, of Antwerp. It really looked like the, like total shit all around the place. And there was one barber shop and the barber shop looked totally unique because the barber shop was, was plastered with, I don't know, 1000 pictures of people getting a haircut there. And every single haircut looked like shit. <laughs> so it was really, it was super. Yeah, the pictures look weird. Everything was weird. It was total weird. And the name of the barber shop was the ultimate grace of God. So it was like 1000% the opposite that the pictures and the area and everything displayed. So we thought, ah, okay, well, this would be an awesome uh, title name for, for an album. And then we thought, yeah, let's take a picture. But somehow we forgot to take the picture. And, and then like uh, two years later, we remembered, oh, we went to that barbershop and it was an awesome band title and an uh, awesome album title and everything. And that's how it all came together. And uh, we are total social media anti-nerds. We are not present at all. We had an Instagram channel and a Twitter channel and everything. And it was managed by our old guitarist. He's really, he's like a social media pro and everything. And we are just like, uh, I don't know, guys who like to play music and 
it belongs into the business and you know but nobody is really into that he even hasn't a smartphone so he he, he has a, like an old phone that takes awfully shitty pictures like a Nokia something I don't know but the pictures are really cool <laughs> and he doesn't use a GPS so he's a total analog guy and yeah that's how we recorded the album in 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 the area of Bamberg um, where we all came from Bamberg, Nuremberg, Würzburg, Erlangen, like in the middle of Franconia, in the middle of nowhere. The studio doesn't exist anymore where we recorded it. Good, good, uh, good thing to know <laughs> after we recorded it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was an awesome process and it was, I think, two years ago we recorded the album and then COVID hit. No shows, no everything, uh, no exile on mainstream records. It was a really hard time. And now we are really pushing for 2023. January, we hope so. And uh, yeah, that's the story of the ultimate grace of God. I know it's long, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, how is it to sit on new material for such a long time? I know a lot of bands have done it. That's the amazing thing about it, because we have, uh, as he said, we, we recorded this stuff, I think, two and a half years ago or something. And so it's not new anymore, but we uh, didn't have the opportunity to play it live kind of because of the Covid time and we recorded this fucking album and wanted to push it and throw it out in the world and want to pl wanted to play it live and it was like we had a break for two years and so I think it's the second gig now today tonight um, where we can play this new material and it's it's really fun to play these new songs because um, all as you said all the the old songs were um, for for a four-piece band and these songs are really for this noisy power trio and it's really fun and uh, great to play the songs live but we didn't have the opportunity to play it so we are looking really forward to to play live tonight especially for Kanzler's birthday of course yeah how is it to how is it to play the first shows after such a long time and uh, maybe at the same time you could tell me your thoughts about the uh, uh, south of mainstream festival here I mean uh, south of mainstream festival and, and everything connected to our boss the mighty Andreas Kohl Kanzler um, it's always a little bit like coming home even if I'm the new guy for six or seven years now. Um, it's uh, it's just like playing with friends and family. Um, you have a lot of familiar faces. Um, the festival went through hard times. They had to switch the, the location and everything. Um, but uh, it just feels awesome. Uh, also at Zukunft am Ostkreuz, the location here. We love it. We played here uh, the Swamp Festival, for example. It was, it was just great. And uh, um, I always love playing a Kanzler related show, so an Exile on Mainstream Records show or the South of Mainstream Festival show because everybody knows each other. A lot of bands are from the label itself or friends or former uh, bands that were on the label. Um, it's just like a big crazy family for underground music that does not really fit a genre. I mean there are doom bands or stoner bands and singer songwriters and super weird stuff and then <laughs> there are a band like us that's a middle little bit in between of every everything like that so yeah i just love playing kanzler shows yeah if you could talk about uh like the experience of the playing live the first uh you know as you said you just played one gig now so how was the experience after the pandemic oh yeah the uh last show was uh was a great feeling to play uh, in front of people <laughs> and it was like um, a little bit like uh, the first show uh, ever <laughs> wait you were nervous <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little bit but this, it was okay the uh, feeling was good and the atmosphere was was very nice um, um, yes but um, I want to say also we have uh, very glad that um, Exile on Mainstream still exists and um, yeah as he said uh, it's really fun to play uh, gigs with uh, 
or uh, organized by Kanzler because the organization is also very, very cool. It's great fun. Yeah, and I must say, I um, f especially for me, it's uh, such a big honor to to be as a band on Exile on Mainstream Records and to play on festivals um, from from Kanzler because I was a big fan before the band existed and um, so I went to the South of Mainstream festivals and everything and bought the records and so that is a real big honor and yeah about playing live um, I think we just miss that and last last time we played live this only one show um, in, in Covid times it was under Covid uh, what, restrictions and um, it was kind of strange but really yeah as you said like being on stage the first time and meeting friends again and going out again and having a lot of beer I think that's anyway the main thing about playing live 